Hi, I'm Eric Moret. This is Carl Wolf of Carl and Warren's Pro Shop here in Saratoga Strike Zone in Saratoga, New York. And we're here to show you the motion hole. Let's set the stage for the motion hole. What is the motion hole? The motion hole is designed to increase length and increase back end. It increases length by increasing the gyroscopic inertia of the ball as well as increasing the intermediate differential which will give you more back end. Why should I use the motion hole? You should use the motion hole because there's no other balance hole location that will increase length and increase back end. How about when? You should only use the motion hole when you have a brand new symmetrical or asymmetrical bowling ball as well as a fully plugged symmetrical or asymmetrical bowling ball and I'll explain further ahead in the video. Who should use it? Anyone can use it, but this ball motion may appeal to those that are more speed dominant or those looking for a harder, crisper back end reaction. You will need the following pro shop materials. A pro sector quarter scale to draw the lines on the ball, a wax pencil, and a square piece of thumb tape which you may need to take a regular piece of tape and just cut it in half. Here are the guidelines for the layout. If your horizontal positive axis point measurement it's five inches or more the pin will be beside the ring finger if your horizontal positive axis point measurement is less than five inches the pin will be over the ring finger so you're probably asking yourself hey what happened to the exact science of dual angles well as we learn more about balance hole locations and their strength we've determined that pin location is not necessarily that exact of a, of a science we just need to have enough flair for the balance hole to do its job. Now let's start with the initial layout. My positive axis point is less than five inches so I'll use the pin over ring finger layout. We'll also want to keep the CG as close to the grip center as possible. My positive axis point is four and seven eighths over by three quarters up. This translates my dual angle layout for pin over the ring finger at 84 by 4 and a quarter by 40. Your pin over ring finger layout may be different in dual angles because most likely your positive axis point and span are different than mine. If you don't know what your appropriate dual angle layout is for either pin over the ring finger or pin beside the ring finger, you can always take an existing ball and draw a fake pin and a fake CG in the appropriate places and draw on your positive axis point and connect the dots between the pin, the positive axis point, and the CG and you will get your valve angle, your drill angle, and your pin to PAP distance that you can then transcribe onto your new bowling ball for the motion hole. For this demonstration we'll be using the Mo Rich Aggressive Motion a high differential, low RG symmetrical bowling ball. We'll first drill it without the motion hole to determine how the ball reacts. The fingers will be drilled to a depth of three and a half inches. This removes as much top weight as possible. Since the motion hole goes on the bottom of the ball, we want to ensure that we have some bottom weight to work with so the ball remains statically legal. Now that we're done with the layout, we'll drill the ball. Once that's done, we'll put the ball on a determinator to get its spin time. Spin time is a measure of a ball's ability to change direction once friction is encountered. Without a motion hole, we'll determine its base spin time. This is a determinator. We'll spin the ball five times and get the average to get the base spin time. Now we'll have
cut out onto the lens for a three shot sequence. As you watch these three shots, I need to stay pretty close to the pocket in order for the ball to strike. If I was looking for a benchmark reaction, I'd probably keep the ball the way it is. But since I'm looking for something more angular, I'll add the motion hole. As you watch the third shot here, you'll see a slight miss to the right barely recovers. This will dramatically change once I add the motion hole. On a symmetrical ball, draw a line from the center of the thumb hole through the pin. Extend this line all the way up until you hit the bottom of the ball. Measure 10 inches from the pin and place a piece of tape. This measurement is 11 inches from the PSA on an asymmetric ball. Once you've taken a few shots, trace your flare on the bowling ball and ensure that the flare does not intersect with the piece of tape. If it does intersect with the piece of tape, you can move the tape left or right and then throw some more shots to make sure the tape does not intersect the flare. It's critical to make sure you get this correct. After we ensured that position is flare safe, we drilled the motion hole first with a 3 quarter inch bit 4 inches deep. The hole is not pitched at 0, 0. Next is a 4 shot sequence with this motion hole size. As you watch these next four shots, you'll notice that the back end motion is much more pronounced, and the finishing position of the ball in the pocket is much deeper than that of without the motion hole. This is called a mechanical advantage. You'll see on the fourth shot, my miss right does recover very strongly, but it leaves a flat 10. I'd like to snap that flat 10 out. So let's drill the motion hole one and an eighth inch bit, four inches deep. We drilled the motion hole with a one and an eighth inch bit, four inches deep. And what you see here is the closest flare line to that hole. With the increased hole size, the flare increased dramatically. This is why it's important to ensure that you remain flare safe. Next is a six shot sequence and our final results with the large motion hole. With the first shot, you can see that I'll need to move deeper as I lined up exactly where I was with the smaller motion hole. On the second shot, watch the ball leave the pin deck. This is displaying the mechanical advantage of the motion hole. On the third shot, I missed dead right. Watch the recovery and the finishing position in the pocket. This is usually a 10 pin lead for me. Now on this last shot coming up, I move five left to see if I can get the ball to fade, and it still finishes high flush. Once we got back to the pro shop, we ran the ball on the determinator again. As you can see, the PSA moved up out of the thumb hole. That's what that little yellow circle is. Up above the pink pin, you can see a yellow X. That's the true low RG axis. The motion hole and its size actually moved up the layout about three quarters of an inch. Once we got the PSA, we ran the ball on the determinator five times to calculate the average spin time. I think you'll be surprised with the results. That's an amazing decrease in spin time, about 40%. This would explain why the ball reacts so sharply to friction. With the motion hole, this ball on the back end acts more like an asymmetrical ball than a symmetrical ball, and the spin time reflects that. I'd like to review some key points to ensure you get the desired results from the motion hole. The first key is, know your positive axis point and your appropriate base layout, whether that's the pin over the ring finger layout or the pin beside the ring finger layout. It's important to know which one's right for you. Number two, give yourself enough bottom weight by drilling the fingers deep. Because the motion hole resides on the bottom of the ball, we want to have a little bit of bottom weight to make sure we offset that for static weight purposes. The third point is one of the most important. Always check the flare before drilling the motion hole. We don't want the flare going over the motion hole because balls don't hook while they're jumping in the air. A couple of important points that go hand in hand. Both symmetrics and asymmetrics, the motion hole line starts at the PSA. 
which for symmetrics that's usually at the thumb hole. On asymmetrics it's usually at the PSA. For the motion holes on symmetrics you draw a line from the pin 10 inches. For asymmetrics you want to draw a line 11 inches from the pin. For the on the box specs we'd like to shoot for something close to a 3 inch pin, maybe slightly longer. This will allow us to get the CG as close to the grip center as possible. For top weight 2.2 to 2.7 ounces would be optimal. That way we can drill the fingers around three and a half inches deep and get most of the top weight out. Maybe get a little bit of bottom weight so we can make the motion hole as large as we want. Number seven, don't pitch the motion hole and don't drill it any deeper than four inches. We don't want to intersect the fingers or the thumb. Number eight is just a reiteration of number three. Never ever drill this hole blindly without checking the flare. Each ball will flare differently, as well as each person will flare differently, so you'll always want to check first before drilling this hole. Do you still have questions about this layout? You can visit the bowlingchat.net forum and Mo and friends at forum.bowlingchat.net. I'd like to send out a special thanks to Mo Pinnell and Steve Freshour. Without Mo's innovation, we wouldn't be here today with the motion hole or a majority of the layouts we see. And Steve is his CAD engineer and I'm sure put in countless hours developing this motion hall. I'd also like to say thanks to Carl Wolf and Warren Guernsey from Carl and Warren's Pro Shop inside of Saratoga Strike Zone. Carl Wolf stayed about three hours past close to make sure that we got this all done correctly. So thanks again, Carl. I'd also like to thank Rich Sheldon and Barnaby Jones of Saratoga Strike Zone for donating the on lane time to shoot this video. So that's a wrap. I hope this video was helpful and I hope everyone that watches this video gives this motion hole a shot. I think you'll find that you have a dynamic reaction on the back end that you've never seen before. So everyone good luck and good bowling.